Hi, today is May, May 9th, and we are reading through the One Year Bible, answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We're referring to 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1, to chapter 7, verse 17, John 6, 1 through 21, Psalm 106, 13 through 31, Proverbs 14, 32, and 33. The Israelites have been defeated. The Ark of the Covenant, which is symbolic of the presence of God, has been captured by the Philistines, their enemy, and there is a lot of death and disaster, and they are not doing well. The Philistines, in the meantime, are praising their gods, and they are, they are saying that their God defeated the God of Israel. God doesn't really take to that very well. So they carried the Ark of the God, this is verse 2 of chapter 5, into the temple of Dagon and placed it beside an idol of Dagon. And, but when the citizens of Ashdod went to see it in the next morning, Dagon had fallen with his face to, to the ground in front of the Ark of the Lord. So picture this, their idol was bowing down to the Ark of the Covenant. So, this is so ridiculous. They had to take their God, the idol, and set him back up. So they put him back in his place again. But the next morning, the same thing happened again. But Dagon had fallen face down before the Ark of the Lord again. But this time, his head and his hands had broken off and were lying in the doorway. Only the trunk of his body was left intact. Then the Lord's heavy hand struck the people of Ashdod and the nearby villages with a plague of tumors. When the people realized what was happening, they cried out, We can't keep the Ark of, the, the ark of God of Israel here any longer. He is against us. We're going to be destroyed. So they said, What should we do with the Ark of the God of Israel? And so they sent it on to a different city. Well, when it got to the different city, which was Gath, the Lord's heavy hand fell on its men, young and old, and he struck them with a plague of tumors. And there was a great panic. And then they sent, their solution was to send the Ark of the Covenant to another city. And the, when the people of Akron saw the Ark coming, they said, oh no, they're bringing the Ark of God of Israel here to kill us too. And they, they cried out for help before, uh, before the plague hit their city too. And uh, the Ark of the Lord remained in Philistine territory seven months in all. That's chapter 6, verse 1. Then the Philistines called in their priests, diviners, and said, What should we do? So they said, send the Ark of the Covenant, send the Ark of the God of Israel back with a gift. They were told, send a guilt offering so the plague will stop. Then if you are healed, you will know that it was his hand that caused the plague. So they put five gold tumors and five gold rats in the Ark as a gift to the God of Israel. Verse 6, don't be stubborn and rebellious as Pharaoh and the Egyptians were. By the time God was finished with them, they were eager to let Israel go. So they built a new cart and they found two cows that had just given birth to a calf, make, make, making sure that the cows have never been yoked to a cart. Hitch the cows to the cart, but shut their calves away from them in a pen. Put the ark of the Lord on the cart and place it, and beside it, place a chest containing the gold rats and the gold tumors you are sending as a guilt offering, then let the cows go wherever they want. If they cross the border of our land and go to Beth Shemesh, we will know it was the Lord who brought this great disaster upon us. If they don't, we will know it was not his hand that caused the plague. It simply came by chance. So there was a test. They were testing to see if it was God caused, the plague was God caused, or if it was just happenstance. So they, uh, this was the plan. So they carried out the plan. And sure enough, these cows that should have gone back to the barn to find their calves went to the land of Israel. 
when the people of Israel saw the ark, they were overjoyed. And they came, uh, it came to a field and they stopped and they put it on a large rock. And then they, they busted up the cart and they made a sacrifice of the cows. But it happened that they did not, the people of Israel did not treat the ark of God and the ark of the Lord the way that it, it was supposed to have been treated. And they looked into the ark of the Lord and they were, many men were killed. The people mourned greatly because of what the Lord had done. And here's a question. Who is able to stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God? They cried out, where can we send the ark from here? So they sent it to a city and they, they had a priest, a man from Levi, uh, take care of it. And it was in the, in the home in this city for 20 years. And during that time, all Israel mourned because it seemed the Lord had abandoned them. Then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, if you're really serious about wanting to return to the Lord, get rid of your foreign gods and your images of Ashtoreth. Determine to obey only the Lord, then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of their images of Baal and Ashtoreth and worshipped only the Lord. And then Samuel told them, gather all of Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Now, that's one of the jobs the prophet has is to intercede for the people. They also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. And it was at Mizpah that Samuel became Israel's judge. He was priest, and now he is judge. And so Samuel took a young lamb, he offered it to the Lord. I had skipped down to verse 9. And he pleaded with the Lord to help Israel, and the Lord answered him. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But, there's that three-letter word again, which changes everything, 180 degrees turn. The Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day, and the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. And then there was a stone. And so here is our relationship. If we will put away our idols, if we will sacrifice our lives, be a living sacrifice, and worship him and him only, he will fight our battles and he will make us victorious over our enemies. Verse 15, Samuel continued as Israel's judge for the rest of his life. John chapter 6, 1 through 21, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiber Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Jesus climbed a hill and sat with his disciples around him. And it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. It reminds me of Ruth in Boaz, Boaz. Uh, said, I'm going to have this plan. And when Ruth told, uh, when Ruth told Naomi that Ruth, that Boaz said that I'm going to, ha I'm going to follow this plan. She said, a man, basically a man with a plan won't rest until it's accomplished. Jesus had a plan and he was testing Philip. Philip replied, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. So Jesus in his humanity with the Holy Spirit took a loaf, uh, five barley loaves and two fish, a young boy's lunch. And he said, tell everyone to sit down. So he put them all in order. They all sat down on the grassy slope. The men alone numbered 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God and distributed them to the people. So take what you have. Thank God for it, and God will multiply it. And then he fed everybody, the disciples, 
I passed out the bread and nothing was wasted. They took up 12 baskets of leftovers. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. So they were declaring he is the Messiah. And they exclaimed, you know, this is the prophet. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself because that wasn't the plan. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as soon as darkness fell, Jesus still hadn't come back. They got into the boat, headed across the lake toward Capernaum. Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, don't be afraid. I am here. But the original says I am is here that he was declaring himself the I am capital letters. I am. Then they were eager to let him in the boat and immediately they arrived at their destination. Now that will preach. When we let Jesus and his whole, the Holy Spirit into our boat, even though we have been toiling for years and years and years, immediately we're going to get to our destination and our purpose. Psalm 106, they quickly forgot. So the psalmist is talking about Israel. They quickly forgot what God had done. In the wilderness, their desires ran wild, testing God's patience in that dry wasteland. So he gave them what they asked for, but he sent a plague along with it. You know, sometimes we'll ask God for something and the answer is if you want, if you want it, you can have it, but there's a consequence. There may be a consequence or a blessing. They bowed before an image made of gold. They traded their glorious God, our, our God is glorious, for a statue of a grass-eating bull. When you think about it, Idolatry is just plain ignorant. I was going to say stupid, but the definition of stupid is that you're not willing to learn. But it's just dumb, you know, to to create something that you made and then bow down to it. It's just dumb. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done such great things in Egypt. And they angered the Lord and a plague brought uh, broke out, um, but people had the courage to intervene. Phineas had the courage to intervene and the plague stopped. And there's so much in the Psalms. I encourage you to read it for yourself. Proverbs 14, the wicked are crushed by disaster, but the godly have a refuge when they die. God is good. He is so good. I want you to uh, share these videos so God's word may be heard and have an absolutely blessed day.